TV. I'm Glenn Lowry, director of the Museum of Modern Art, and of course uh, was part of the team that oversaw first the decision to do Tim Burton and then worked uh, with the curators to make sure we had an extraordinary exhibition. Tim Burton's one of those exhibitions that allows you literally to see into the mind of the artist. It's as if he opened up his brain and let you explore all the ideas and thoughts that are rattling around in there. Yeah, I'm the chief curator of the Department of Film at MoMA. So it premiered in New York uh, last fall. It ran for five months there. And Melbourne is the first international tour date. What they told me about New York was um, that people that wouldn't ordinarily go to a museum came to the show, which that made me feel very, very, you know, great. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's like, because I never, I didn't grow up in a museum culture. Hollywood Wax Museum was probably the only museum I really went to, so I can't really call that a museum. But uh, that's what I love about this place, too, the sort of interactive nature of things. It's, it's just it's much more inviting and exciting. You know, it's not so standoffish as the sort of museum experience. It's, it's much more draws you in, which I really, really appreciate. It's a bigger space here, but it still feels intimate. It still, you know, has the chaos of my mind in a way. I wasn't really, I didn't really speak, so I, you know, I felt much more comfortable doing a sketch and having that have more meaning to me than sort of my intellectual mind, and, and so it's always been, in certain projects, um, you, you know, a way of like thinking that, well, that's more meaningful and powerful for me coming from an image, more from the subconscious, and I, f I feel much more sort of comfortable, and, and that's coming from a stronger place for me. You know, a lot of times you forget that um, it's not just the commercial product that's in his brain, um, that he really does have a vision that extends beyond what we see on screen, and that's where some of his sketches really, I think, kind of give you a little insight about what's really going through his head. It's always a struggle to make a film. You know, I, I realized early on, you know, when you make a successful film, you think, oh, well, you know, then you have the opportunity to do whatever you want to do. And I remember after doing Batman, I thought, well, that was a success. So, but then after that, trying to get Edward Scissorhands done was very difficult. Nobody wanted, you know, nobody wanted to do that. I have that even now, you know, so it's, it's, it's a process that, uh, you know, always kind of keeps you slightly humble, you know. It, 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 it's like it's, it's never kind of a blank check and never an open book that way. Some of my favorite pieces are some of the cartoons that he's done from like really early on, from like 12 years old all the way through, you know, contemporary that really show his kind of twisted sense of humor. For me, the drawings are fantastic. Uh, there are literally hundreds of them, but there's also the opportunity to literally work through the process by which some of his most iconic films were made. So it's kind of exhibition that you can look at endlessly and constantly discover new things. But there's a kind of haunted house at the end uh, that's a don't miss as far as I'm concerned. I don't want to give away the surprise. I didn't realize I saved so much stuff because I, I never really look at it. I sort of stuff stuff in drawers and uh, Ron and Jenny just kind of did an archaeological dig and uh, you know they found my original uh, rejection slips from Disney and all sorts of things which I didn't even know that I, I had or kept. The things you shouldn't miss are the things you would never expect to see in an exhibition about Tim Burton. I mean it's great to have the Batmobile and it's great to have props from the movies but when you go through and you see his really early sketchbooks from grade school and you see the notes from Disney saying, well, you've got some great ideas, but we think you should work harder, basically rejecting him as an artist. Um, and he just made a billion dollars for them, you know, uh, 25 years later. Um, Hansel and Gretel, a, a TV uh, version of the fairy tale that he made for the Disney Channel that aired exactly once because it was way too creepy. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you'll never be able to see again, probably, because um, it's really Tim's personal material. So that's what I would look out for.